What's up, fellas? I got something kind of interesting right here. This thing has been growing underwater for seven days. Okay, so the pump failed two days in. So I went ahead and hooked up this air pump. It's a dual port. So I connected this T up to an air stone here. Got a stainless steel air stone. And that is pumping the water pretty good. That's just to keep the temperature from stratifying. And this heater alone would probably stir that a little bit, but I want to keep the temperature consistent throughout the whole tank. So I did what's called a wet cure. And we're back to the project of the refractory castable combustion chambers for these kiln burners. A lot of people have mentioned some pretty good ideas in the comments, but I got to keep it cheap for right now. So I'm just using the cheapest refractory I could get. So in this version, um, we've added some stainless steel fibers. I had a little bit of leftover from a project I had just done. And we're going to be revisiting this. This is the one that we broke in testing last week. This one here pretty much survived, but it's really big and bulky. This has no reinforcement. And it started to get a buildup in there from just a couple of hours of use, whereas this one has no buildup at all anywhere the glassy ceramic material is. You can see here there's no buildup there. And wherever there's no ceramic, like where it peeled off or bubbled off, we're getting that ashy buildup. Same thing in here. It's pretty clean. So this one here, we're gonna take out of the mold. It's, it's went through a seven day cure. Pretty interesting mess we got going on here. But I also have one that cured for three days with a little bit of a different combustion chamber. And I've got it set up right here. This was just basically one of those painters measuring bowls, kind of like a, a bowl that um, you would measure out paints and thinners and stuff like that, or epoxies. So this one also has the reinforcing concrete in it. It doesn't look like it. You don't see it sticking out anywhere. But we're just going to do a propane test on this thing and we're going to kind of cure it. You guys did mention some really good suggestions about um, firing this thing. What do they call that when you fire something? A bisque firing or something like that. This stands for wet cure. So with a, a one day wet cure, you're here. And this stands for mass change or gas ingress, fluid ingress into the concrete. But the megapascal strength charts are very similar to this. So three days underwater and the smaller this column right here shows the least amount of mass ingress. Either it's chemicals leaching in or a gas they impose on the concrete sample. 72 degrees, so I gotta wear a jacket. I'm acclimated for summer death. That's the problem with having really bad ADHD. I've been trying to get this wrench over here for the past 10 minutes. Halfway there, I get devoted to a side quest. That's kind of loud. I kind of need to slow it down. Now this has been fired to 500 degrees, but frighteningly enough, I'm still seeing a little steam come off of it for some reason. So that's not cool.
So on the last and final one, we're just gonna leave this on it. It's gonna stay on there. I'll clean it up some so it ain't in such bad shape, but that's gonna be the idea. We'll just have the whole thing encased and that will be just fine. Any cracks that happen, they'll have absolutely no significance whatsoever. This was just three days on this one. All right, so I missed most of that, but we ran for right around an hour. Sustained quite a few cracks here. But those stainless steel fibers should keep it together. Those are just natural interior expansion cracks from the inside growing faster than the outside. ago you guys seen a video I posted of the thunder paint that I made that patched the holes in this burner cup which had stopped working because the swirl patterns were off it's still running good this grill's working out great We've used it several times since then all right so essentially we're gonna run this thing at higher powers on waste oil tomorrow or something but what I'm seeing in this testing is that we're probably better off just ditching the stainless steel fiber. Even though it is holding out, I just feel like the customer would be concerned with this cracked up shell. Like, look at this. They're not going to like that. Nobody is going to be into that. It is a natural attribute of refractories, but um, what I'll do is I'm just going to encase these things in stainless steel the way I did the Fat Man Burner. The Fat Man Burner has performance characteristics that have outperformed almost anything I've ever built. So I kind of like that setup. Having a refractory with a stainless steel shell is a very robust design. It's going to cost a little bit more to do it, but I think it's worth it. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Um, all I did right here was just turn the air, or the, the air down. So I'm cycling the air on and off to show how much fuel we're actually burning and to determine the stability of the combustor design because that's kind of important. If it's real easy to blow it out, if just the slightest subtle adjustment causes it to flame out, you've got a bad design on your hands and you need to fix it. So that's kind of what we're doing right here. This shows that this is a phenomenal design to be able to put up with that type of tampering. So we got a lot of cracks from thermal expansion. I bet that this thing would stay like this indefinitely. We're gonna see more of this on waste oil. I'm not gonna bother painting it or nothing yet. I also decided to burn out the, the mold of this other piece with it. So I turned this thing on and off about 10 times today. Turning it on and off is the most destructive event when it's running, it's really no big deal. It's the expansion and the contraction. All right. We're going to let it cool down completely. Okay. In this phase, we're going to do an experiment. I have some experimental grooves at each quadrant for a little bit out of phase there because it, it fit tightest in the shell at this rotational position so we're going with that but these notches are meant to change the velocity of that region and hopefully create an even more stable burn so we're going to do something like this on the inside I'm going to do one at every 45 degrees, but for here we're just doing 90. So, let's see if this enhances the flame any. 
jet streams in one area and those velocity slip streams where they meet is where the hottest and most efficient combustion and most stable as flames come from is when you have velocity differentials that's what really makes things happen so that was kind of the idea and I, we are getting a nice little cone out of this thing I will admit um, but we're gonna see some more out of this at higher power on waste oil. Cold zone. I don't think I'm into it, man. I don't think I'm into it. All right, fellas, so I busted the back of this thing tearing that metal back off of there. Those grooves didn't do anything special that I could see, but we're gonna try this thing again with waste oil, which is where I thought they would perform best. I also was unable to turn these things all the way up to high today because it's Sunday and there's people out in our yards having barbecues and stuff everywhere. This other one performed amazing. It does have some expansion joints in it now, if you would like to call them that. <laughs> Now that they're there, it's done cracking. I think it's gonna be fine. And I tried to pull this thing apart with my hand, both of them, I can't do it. You can see how much stainless steel wires in there. So more on this whenever I get time. I got a bunch of stuff I gotta build. I'm not sure if I can do it tomorrow or not. 